welcome back, travelers, to Legendary Lore with my bonded friend, familiar, Joe. Say hi, Joe. I do look pretty familiar. He is familiar. Not pretty, but familiar. Now, we're, we're, we're the story... <laughs> <laughs> this story picks up with that one kid that we saw uh, that tried to kill the uh, Professor Onyx earlier in the first episode. Their name is Taver. So Taver is freaking out because they're they're like they're going through the tunnels underneath the biblioplex trying to get away because they almost got killed by a professor who looked like she wanted to kill him like hard. <laughs> like I and, thought the professors didn't care about us. Yeah, pretty much, and. The, it actually says right here. You lied to me. Taver had seen true darkness in that professor's violet eyes. She'd meant to kill him, and for what? So Extus could have some dusty old book he remembered from however many years ago? Night falls, and they're able to like scurry away. Then we have a flashback to Luca. Luca kind of just shows up like they, they had just planeswalked, right? It's oriented, hungry. He goes into a small village, hoping to get like some kind of food or drink or whatever, right? He's there, he's sitting at the counter. Luca just asks for food. And he looks at the clothes and he goes, you're not from around here. Basically what happens is that Luca is accused of being an Orique agent. It's because he's different. He looks different and he, they, like, they just don't trust him. Also, everyone on the plane can use magic. It's a little bit of an exaggeration, but in most planes, you have a like a level of ma like a level of magic user. So like you have normal people like on Ravnica, there's people that don't use magic. They're just normal humans, right? On Innistrad, or, you have doomed travelers. Exactly, just normal people who are just walking around and then they die and stuff happens to them. But on this plane, basically everyone knows magic to some extent because it's such a, a like a strong thing on the plane. It's such a prominent thing because everyone even the bears. Yeah, exactly. Sentient bears. Sapient bears. Makes perfect sense. The point is, Meh. he's hungry. <laughs> he runs away, and as he's trying to get away from these guys, he, like, real quick, he reaches out to, a like, a wild dog and has the dog attack a guy. And so, Luca's rage, he uses his rage to entice the other animals. To, he basically acts of treasons animals around him into doing what he wants them to do. And so the, the, there's a horse nearby, there's a dog, and he just has them all do their things to to mess with it, to, to like, get rid of the people that are attacking him. And he's still super hungry. <laughs> Going back to Liliana, you may remember she was looking for a book, a very important book, but she could not find it. And so she goes to Belladros. Belladros is, of course, the first name of the Witherbloom dragon. There's like little glowing spheres, there's root structures, there's books and scrolls and... Liliana is thinking, okay, well, maybe one of these could be able to bring Gideon back. Because she's still thinking about bringing Gideon back because of his sacrifice for her. And she's like, hey, you must know a way to like to bring people back. And she takes out a piece of his Sorrel because it was broken. And she's like, could you... It was broken could... back on a, a bonquet, right? Yes. And she's like, here, you, we could use this and you'd be able to... Um, like you could re like reanimate him, right? Because it's like his, part of his essence is part of it. And Belarus is like, that's a terrible idea. Some things are best left undone. And when you're talking about bringing memories and reanimating them based off of objects, there are no simple answers. You're talking about the very essence of life. You can't just be like, do this, do that. This is resurrection. This is This is not just necromancy. It's incredibly difficult, even for an elder dragon. This is not the kind of thing that you should be messing with because it'll go terribly. And then she like brings up like, hey, what about the, the child of Professor Gladefell, which is something that Belladris must have done. And Bella, Bella, she actually says, that was something I will not see repeated for all our sakes. So that means that Belladris similarly had done something like Liliana where she brought something back and it was a terrible idea. Liliana's like, okay, well, enough of that. That was only part of the reason I came here. Also, the Orik are going to take over the university. <laughs> no one's listening. And the dragon looks at her and is like, you know, the deans are there. We got dragon's guards. We have the Oracle. We're all fine. You don't need to worry about it. Even the Archaics can deal with this stuff if they need to. This was her last hope, Gideon's last hope, to come back. Please, he took my death. 
help me give him back his life. And all Belgio says is, I cannot. And she goes to sleep because <laughs> she's a giant dragon and doesn't care about anything. <laughs> and it's cool because as she's leaving, Belladro says one more thing. The pain can be unbearable at times. But in the end, how we honor the dead is reflected in how we treat the living. And that's kind of like the wisdom of the dragon. Real quick information on Luca. He was from the plane of Ikoria. He had bonded with this tiger bird thing. I forgot the name of it because it didn't really matter. Because it got uh, killed, and that was his whole story. Yeah, it got murdered by the, the people that were like his partners, his the, uh, fellow humans. They didn't trust him because he was a bonder now. And then he got really upset, so he decided to sick an entire jungle on the on the place. It survived because of Vivian stopping it. But the main thing is that Luca is just filled with this anger and this grief from losing that that connection. So that mention of how we honor the dead, reflection on how we treat the living, kind of is echoed into Luca's story. Also, if you guys want more in the Ikoria story, let us know. That would be about an episode. Now, he's super hungry. Luca's trying to survive and he's like dying of hunger and he's like collapsing and falling over cliffs and stuff. And he's there, he's not on his knees, he's pushing stone away and he sees golden eyes looking at him. And the creature gives like this, this yelp. He's like, okay, get out of my way. And then he passes out. He wakes up and the fox is there. And it's, there's a pile of berries and nuts laying next to his leg. And he's like, thank you. And he starts to like raise a hand and he stops himself and he looks at her and then he casts out the bonder senses. Now, the thing is, there's different ways for him to, to do this. As a bonder, he has the choice of like taking, basically. He can take the, the, uh, the mind, make it a servant, a slave to him or he can use the more gentle bond magic to make it a partner. So he does that and that's how he bonds with this fox. And so together the, the two of them had they go on like a little romp. So Luke is not a wholly bad guy. He's just angry. He's an angry guy and that's why he's red white because you can't have a, a red like a red white planeswalker without them just being angry because that's true. that that would require good writing. Anyways, Johnny Vengeant is vengeant and he's red <laughs> even though Johnny's a white green part of Naya. Yeah. But he tapped into the red because he's Naya and angry. <laughs> <laughs> and so Liliana is going like doing her thing and she's kind of just walking through the woods trying to like get back to the place when she's ambushed by a bunch of Orik. Well, not so much ambushed as it is she sees them ambushing a stag, just like a random animal. And she's like, nah, <laughs> that doesn't look right. So she's watching as they load the stag into a wagon. While that's happening, Luca sees a trail of smoke from a chimney. And he's like, hmm, somewhere to sleep. I would love that. And then he's thinking about the Orik and how the mass mages use, which are the Orik, they use magic that is forbidden by the colleges of Strixhaven. He doesn't really quite know what that means, but he does make him think of General Kudro because that was kind of the idea. It was like, you were forbidden from using bonder magic. He sees this as a place ruled by fear. He's looking at, looking at things from the perspective of he has the right to bear his magic. And if anyone's Basically trying to- just like, ah, yes, has a bunch of rules like home. Well, I'm not gonna make the same mistake as home. And I'm gonna go with these guys that are breaking the rules. <laughs> So the Dragon's Guard are a group of like people that have basically been trained by the teachings of the dragons, specifically to go out and save people. Think of them as like heroes for hire kind of thing. And so there's a Dragon's Guard and they're fighting a bunch of uh, Orik agents and everything's happening. The, the, the Dragon's Guard is kind of taking them out like nothing. And then Luca has a bear and a, a bunch of wolves and all these other monsters just come out of the forest and eviscerate the dragon's guard that happens and the orik is like wow yeah we need this guy on our team <laughs> <laughs> then we finally get a direct shot of Extus. it says Extus holding his breath as he pours a shimmering red liquid into a shell bowl his whole deal is he's a uh, angry boy uses a lot of blood magic despite being black white um he's not oh look at soren yeah I was, I was saying he's not silver quill uh, oh. Like he's he's corrupted kind of thing. Also and, like Soren. He's also black, white, and not silver quill. And so he keeps messing up this potion because he's not that good at it. And he's upset. And he says, that was the fourth failure. And then he finds out about um, 
about Luca. He's like, you know what? Let them come. Let them come in. I want to see what he's got. To, like what he's got. The same time this is happening, you have Liliana, and she puts down a book that she had been studying, and she's like, I've been doing all this research. I can't do anything. There's no way I'm going to bring Gideon back. This was the only place I could go there where I would actually have a chance to do that. Just types into Google how to make the guy you were talking to who turned into dust into a guy to talk to again. <laughs> and so, no? okay. And so she's kind of just like looking around and she's thinking, okay, well, she came here to try and get Gideon back. But if she hadn't been here, the Orik that was in the biblioplex wouldn't have been spotted and they would have been completely ambushed. And says that she hated the idea of destiny because she thought it was like somebody was telling her what to do. She thinks about how Gideon was a huge believer in being at the right place at the right time and that she needed to learn a lesson from him, confront the past. And so she decides that she's going to have to save the Strixhaven from the Orik. And as she decides that, she sees a flash of gold outside her window. And she notices that one of the ki- one of the students has blonde hair shining in the dim light uh, as it fell over her Prismari uniform. She recognizes it as Rowan Kenrith and sees that she's friends with a wither- uh, several Witherbloom students. I like Rowan. She's out here making friends. <laughs> oh, biscuit! A little biscuit. But that because of that, Professor Onyx then realizes, you know what? I'm here. I'm a professor. And what Gideon would do is invest in these lives. He would take care of these people. I know what I need to do now. And so that is how this story ends with basically Liliana uh, having the resolve to actually go out and to, to like to save the uh, save everyone and reach out to the other planeswalkers that are on the plane. Kind of like forming the Gatewatch. Yeah, which is kind of also get, what Gideon would have done. Yeah. <laughs> It's literally what he did. Any last words, Joe? Sounds good. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm on a cliffhanger too, so don't worry about it, guys. We'll see what happens next time here on The Boss Watch. Go ahead and leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you... Just subscribe, please. We want subscribers. And let us know in the comments what kind of animal you'd bond with and how you'd bond with them. Dolphin. That's actually super...